So very interesting how a lot of the communique was phrased, um, particularly in terms of talking about Ukraine's accession, in terms of irreversible, making a firm commitment to that. But there's still no definite timeline there. And I think that reflects the fact that it's very difficult for NATO as an organization to set a timeline on when Ukraine can join, both because that could be seen as an escalation by Russia and also because there are some internal concerns that within NATO some members might not be as pro-Ukraine joining in the short to medium term as others. So I think that's also played into the, the package that is shortly going to be announced as well in terms of you know, you've seen it being announced by individual countries, you've seen it being announced by NATO as a whole. Um, it's very interesting that you can see that some countries have stepped back from potential involvement. I'm thinking here particularly of Hungary, which has recently um, agreed a, what you might call an opt-out with NATO, where it will still be, remain part of NATO, very much so, um, but has effectively a non-participation agreement when it comes to Ukraine. It doesn't support, it doesn't take part there. So this is about managing those sensitivities within NATO as well. Yeah, in, in trying to manage those sensitivities, though, I mean, could a, a, a perhaps another or a further um, agreement and commitment to defense spending reaching that 2% target and beyond for some nations, would that have not sent an even firmer message to say that this is how much more committed we are? Yes, we've seen that perhaps from the UK Prime Minister, but it feels like it hasn't been a full-on uh, commitment by all parties. Well, I think it's, it's very telling that this year, for the first time, NATO on average um, hits that 2% um, defence spending target. I think 23 countries within NATO have now hit that target this year, including Germany. As you mentioned, the UK, Keir Starmer has already committed to increasing that to 2.5%, continuing the policies of his predecessors. No timeline on when that 2.5% will be hit. That's obviously pending the, the recently announced spending review. But I think the language there is around the continuation of the trend towards more military spending, which, as you say, sends that firm message there around commitment. I think Starmer's language around you know, giving that defence spending for as long as is needed is intended to give reassurance to Ukraine and send a strong message as well. I want to pick up on your point around uh, entry-proofing membership for Ukraine to NATO because it did seem as though some of the members were trying to foolproof the membership process in case there's a Donald Trump presidency again down the track. Is there any way to provide some sort of ironclad guarantee for Ukraine to ensure the membership stays on track? So in terms of membership, um, as I mentioned, there's, there's no firm timeline and I think NATO can't at the moment commit to that timeline beyond saying it's it's on track, it's irreversible, sending that strong commitment. But is it reversible? But, say if Donald Trump was a, were to be elected again, could this be a reversible process? I think NATO is preparing very much for the prospect of a second Donald Trump presidency and what that would mean for NATO. I think the language used here is very much sending the signal that there is that commitment to Ukraine. What NATO will be looking at is what NATO could look like with a second Trump presidency. And in that sense, Trump was very clear in his first presidency, he's been clear ever since in statements about what he wants to see from NATO, which was in his first presidency, increased defence spending, which we're now getting towards that. So in that sense, you can say it's moving in the direction that Trump wanted. He's also talked about um, wanting an end to the war in Ukraine, which is something that uh, could be under discussion if and when um, there's a Trump presidency. But on that front, I would say that it's something that NATO has shown its commitment there. If the US wanted to push uh, in a future scenario in which Trump were the president for a, um, a swift end to the conflict, it would be very difficult for that conversation to take place. 